Imagine that you wake up one day and you're in a strange land. And that's really what it's like becoming an amputee. Today is a big day. Today I get my arm, so it's exciting. Strap is what's gonna hold the arm on. Push like that, down yeah. into it. Kind of just the way I'm pulling you yeah. in there. This is the on-off switch. So it's got Bluetooth built into it. <laughs> the hand really distinguishes us from other species. It turns out that in our brain, the part that controls the motion of the hand takes about a third of the brain. The advancement in prosthetics has always coincided with a war because that's when the research and the dollars come into it. The DARPA project was initially started with requests from Walter Reed saying current prosthetics just are not providing the capabilities that we'd like them to do. The name of the project is Revolutionizing Prosthetics. The returning soldiers from Iraq and Afghanistan have really been a tremendous benefit to, to the amputee community as a whole because it has allowed the public to understand much more thoroughly the issues affecting people with limb loss. The leg I'm wearing right now is just a standard mechanical knee with a hydraulic cylinder in it. The uh, sheer number of prostheses is out there is mind-boggling. The next great step in lower limb prostheses will be the introduction of motors. It doesn't take as much energy to walk. You can go a lot farther, do stairs, because you can't, with the other prosthetics, walk upstairs like a normal walk. There is a whole segment of the limb loss community, and it's the silent majority that most people don't think about, don't know about. The number of amputees that are coming out of, the, out of the war is so minute to the number that are in this country at this time. We have over two million amputees. Up until the Iraqi war, they were home. Basically, they were closet people. So there was a lot of shame, and there was a whole shift of consciousness when legs went from being passive ball and chains to actually highly functional. So when that happens, you don't mind saying, yeah, this is my artificial leg. If you're talking about children, a prosthetic leg doesn't really grow, so that needs to be replaced as a child gets older. The kids are just incredibly dynamic and ready to go. They're well-heeled limbs, their body's already adapted to it. So you're just trying to design something that's going to get them a little bit more function. So big changes will be coming down the road for them in terms of the types of limbs that will be made. We're on an upswing now like has never been seen before.